So, so today what I want to do is I want to share a message called music to my ears. Everyone say music to my ears. And I'm going to explain that in a minute and what that's about and the thrust of this. But one thing that um, I want to challenge you in your mindset today as devoted followers of Christ, how many of you have said that I'm going to follow Jesus with all of my life for the rest of my life? You have said that. Come on, don't be shy. Come on, don't be shy. You've said yes to Jesus. Now, now here's something that I want to challenge you with. Because the, the goal and the mission and the vision of our church, we've shared it over the last couple of months, is that we are about, here at Streamline Church, we are about helping people say yes to Jesus. Everyone say, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. That we want people to give their lives to Christ, to say, yes, Jesus, I want you as Lord, as, uh, Lord of my life, and I want you to be my Savior, and they want to be joined up together with God, but it takes someone to help them get to that place. So we're about helping people say yes to Jesus. Now here's when I want to here here's where I want to get a little personal. Is for you to really take some self inventory today. As I'm going through this message and even right now just for you to really allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you but to be honest with yourself. Is when it comes to helping people say yes to Jesus on a personal level and on a real level, when it comes to that if you were to Kind of measure that from a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being all the time and that is what you're about and 1 being not at all, where would you rank yourself at helping people say yes to Jesus? That you would look at who have I helped say yes to Jesus? Who am I helping say yes to Jesus? Not that I just toss something on the social media and say, there, I put it out there. But like on, on a personal level, then man, I'm, I'm helping somebody. I'm helping somebody. And I want, I want to ask you that today because I want you to ask yourself when I'm going through this message, are you helping anybody say yes to Jesus? And this week, are you going to say to help someone say yes to Jesus by bringing them to church next week for a comedy Sunday and what we're doing now? I don't know how many of you have been to large rock concerts or concerts of any type, but uh, one thing that happens is, you know, it's a real excitement, exciting atmosphere. They have the mosh pit and some of how many of you have been in a mosh pit? If you can be honest, okay, a couple of you, uh, me for sure, a little bit of horseshoe. Anyway, um, but, but uh, this is back when I was younger. Trust me, I get hurt now. Um, but but there's one thing that about a concert is there's a lot of excitement. You have tens of thousands of people a lot of times, and people are already going excited and, cheer, excited and cheering, and the band's out there, whoever the performer is. And then all of a sudden, the performers or the, the musicians will just begin to play one or two little chords. One or two little things, and the crowd goes wild. Because they recognize it, they're excited, and it's just something that that's what they came for. They came to hear that. What it is, is it's music to their ears. It's excitement. It's something I've anticipated, something that is good, and I can't wait to hear more. It's music to their ears, and, and today that's what I really want to address in a different way. But I'll tell you personally what would be music to my ears. This is good. Parents, you're going to be able to associate with this is it would be such good music to my ears if my, my kids just said to me, you know what, Dad? I just realized in my teenage years, I don't know anything at all. <laughs> but, I, but I know you know everything, Dad. You've been through it also. So, and, and I mean, it, it'd be music to my ears if they said, Dad, I'm just going to do whatever you tell me from now on. That's my goal in life, Dad, just to please you. That, that would be music to my ears. Or even when they're, you know, down the road and business life or they've got a job to come to me and just say, you know what, dad, I just found out I'm going to be a multimillionaire and I'm going to be your retirement package. I'm going to buy you this and you're going to be on vacation for the rest of your life. Man, that would be music to my ears. I would love to hear those things. And as we go through the Bible and we go through the gospels and the, the encounters that Jesus had. There are some things that transpire that happen that I just look at and I say, I just think that opportunity for Jesus must have been music to his ears. That he, that he sensed something, that he seen something, or someone came to him or whatever it was, and it was just like, this is music to my ears. I get to do something right now. I get to show people the power and the love of God. 
And so today I want to look at a, just a quick little story. I'm not going to be long, and it happens to deal with Jesus and this encounter that he has with what we call a leper. And so if you have your Bible, would you tune, turn to Luke chapter 5? And if you don't, uh, we have the notes that you got on your way in or on the app. You can follow along or on the screen, the scriptures there. And I encourage you to take notes because sometimes the Holy Spirit's going to speak something to you that I'm not saying. You need to write it down so you don't forget it. Verse, or chapter 5, verse 12. And it's speaking of Jesus. While he was in one of the cities, he was going from city to city ministering, and God was using the Heavenly Father. He's giving him power to, to, to minister and to touch people. There came a man full of leprosy. Now, leprosy was what people had as skin diseases, and it varied. It, it could be something as extreme as uh, people who would have um, deformed skin figures, and there would be growths that would happen on their body, throughout their body. It could be where they just developed scabs all over. They had uh, rashes and, and different things happening to their body, and so they just kind of categorized that as those people who were lepers. They have leprosy, and so uh, they, they considered them to be contagious, and so here is Luke, he's a, he's a doctor, he wrote one of the gospels, but he's a doctor, and he actually is, he, he knows what this leprosy looks like, and he's explaining it, and here's the encounter that happens. It says in verse 2, and when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will. Another version said this, Lord, if you want to, Lord, if you want to, I know you can, Lord, if you will, but Lord, if you want to, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Now, when he would say, uh, Lord, would you make me clean? Not only was he talking about the physical body and how they considered them filthy and unfit, but also in a spiritual sense, they were what they call ceremonially unclean that they were spiritually dirty. And so you had to stay away from them so that you didn't uh, catch the, the filth that was on them. And so you have these people who are ostracized and, and th this full of sickness. And what would happen is this. So people would stay away and it wouldn't hurt anybody and no one would be impacted by it. What they made them do was is they made them either carry or attach bells to themselves because when they walked, and they walked through the community, people would hear the bell and they would know to stay away. And basically uh, this person, and actually they would, they would have to do this as part of when they're walking around and ringing the bell, is that they would have to say, I'm unclean. I'm dirty. Stay away from me. And they're ringing this bell. And I just think this, I, I just see Jesus. And I see Jesus seeing a leper and seeing him fall on the ground. And I just think that when Jesus would hear this tune, that it wouldn't be someone that he would walk away from or avoid or push away like maybe we do at times because we're fearful or insecure. We don't know what people are going to say. But Jesus would be drawn and say, that's music to my ears and I'm not going to walk away. I'm going to press in. I'm going to lean in and we're going to see miracles happen. And I believe that that's what our heart should be as Christians is that we wouldn't just hear something like this and the trouble and the pain and the life that people are going through and the hardships, but we would be drawn to this. That this would say, look, I've got to have a heart and a compassion for people who are away from God and they're hurting. A couple of years back, I took a trip uh, to India and then my wife did. We I went for a second time and we went to this ministry that our church totally invested in and sponsored and it's called Mercy Calcutta. Now, when I was there, uh, we seen some horrific things from children with cleft palates uh, to uh, children who were blind, either uh, they were born blind because of, it, they have all these sicknesses because of all the bacteria that's throughout, you know, the cities and the towns and they take baths in, in what they would call a river, but it's actually full of, uh, you know, feces. And I even saw a dead goat floating down the river. They're out there taking baths in it. And and, and then you, you have some that are not born blind, but their parents burn their eyes out with wax so that they could beg and they don't have anywhere to live. Um, you, 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 you just seen, you know, people that were going hungry in this ministry, uh, they provide uh, food free every day for 25,000 people. They, uh, in the hospital, they would provide free care because these people had nowhere to go. 
And a big part of it was, a big reason was, is because in India they have what they call a caste system. And this was developed by the Hindu religion. And what it does is they have different levels of people, elite and privileged people. And those who are considered cursed, either because of their family history, either because of who their family is associated with, any illnesses at all, these people would be cast away. But there would be like the top tier, it'd be a pyramid and there would be the super elite and it just went down and all the, and these were privileged people and some got more, some got less. But outside of this caste system was something even lower and they were called the untouchables. And with the untouchables, these were people that they wouldn't even associate with, that the community, that the government wouldn't even try to assist or help. They would know all the curses. They would see everything. And this ministry, Mercy Calcutta, went in. Two people, husband and wife, the Buntains, and they went in in the 50s and they, they built a hospital and over time and they had all these ministries and they housed people for free and, and, and they gave them free education because the government wouldn't educate them and city officials would and, and, and they wouldn't give them care and medical. We saw people that were literally laying and dying on the street and the city wouldn't do anything about it because of this caste system. And when the Buntanes went in and they started this ministry, the government officials and people around, they actually had a hard time with the Buntanes and what they were doing because they said, what are you doing wasting your, your resources on them? They're a lost cause. They're cursed. But there was something about the compassion in the heart of the Buntanes that said, not on our watch. We're going to do something about it. And they ministered to them because they had a great compassion. But the compassion was missing. It was missing on the other side with this caste system. And, and something I really want us to, when we're talking about, are we, is it going to be music to our ears or are we going to help people? Is how much compassion do we have? Now, I'm not saying anybody here rejects people and is harsh to people or you're sick and I can't have anything to do with you. You're cursed, you're ugly, you're beat up and, and you're a waste. I don't think anybody in here would do that. But... What if we measured our compassion by how much we actually share our story and what God has done? What, what does it look like, our compassion, as far as inviting people to church and, and getting them here because we know the need that they have for salvation, for a God who loves them and wants to restore them to a relationship with Him? What is our measure of compassion that we have in our hearts? And I want that to grip you today. I want that to pull you today so that you would be willing to do something that you would say, every time I see someone in need, I'm going to have compassion because it's music to my ears. But here's something that happens when we lack compassion. And this is going to be in your notes today. Lacking compassion causes us to ignore the cries of the hurting. That's what lacking compassion does. What compassion is, is it's this strong desire to alleviate suffering. That we have this strong desire not to just, man, I feel bad, but I need to somehow alleviate this for someone else so they don't live that type of, that lack of quality of life. And what I want you to see in the spiritual sense, going deeper than just the felt needs and the practical needs that we see, and you're hungry, let me give you a few bucks, but also deep down spiritually, is what type of compassion do you have to be able to say, I've got to make a difference in the life of this person. That the struggles that they're going through, that the hurt and the pain and, and the life condition and where they're at, this is going to be music to my ears and it's not going to repel me. It's not going to keep me away, but it's going to pull me in. See, sometimes I, I just, I, I think about Christians and I think about disciples, disciples, followers of Christ and how we're here. And if, if I can just step in and meddle a little bit, the, the people that you spend the most time with in your week, and this is not only here, but beyond uh, Christians in general, we work with people and how much have we even attempted to bring them to church to say they need Jesus? Amen. Ask yourself, think about those people around you in your life that you work with, how much have you said, I've got to invest myself in their soul so that they can say yes to Jesus just like I did myself? Man, that, that's a hard one. And are we willing to do that? Because Jesus, what prompted him and what caused him to respond and music to his ears, what it was was simply compassion. In the book of Mark, it also has the same occurrence that Luke records, but he adds something. There's three words, and it says this in the scripture. Filled with compassion. 
It wasn't just like, ah, man, this guy needs some help here. Let me help him out. Jesus was filled with compassion. Compassion gripped his heart for people and where they were. And it said he was filled with compassion. Jesus reached out his hand and touched them. He didn't say, hey, come here. But he went to him and he says, I'm willing. He said, be clean, be clean. And it's important for us to have compassion to be able to look at how do I further the gospel? How do I tell people that there's good news? Because it really is good news, isn't it? Isn't it good news that I've been rescued and I have a purpose in life because the Holy Spirit got a hold of me and Jesus died for me and now I have a relationship with God that I couldn't make happen on my own, that he doesn't condemn me or judge me or hold things against me, but I am forgiven in him. I have eternity with him. I'm restored to God. His love fills my life and on and on and on. It's that compassion that leads us. And Jesus, in another portion of scripture in the book of Mark, what Jesus does is he kind of gives the intent. He kind of gives the goal and, and this is the motivation of where the compassion comes from. And he's telling them this. It says, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor. It's the sick. I have not come to call the righteous but sinners. I want us to see something here on a practical level, something that happens today. This is why we don't invite people from other churches. Can I get an amen? This is why we don't, we're not trying to get people from other churches. We're not trying to get other Christians in here. There are people who are in pain that don't know Jesus. They're unchurched, they're de-churched. They haven't said yes to Jesus at all. In our place, See, it's not compassion when we're going and getting somebody from another church or another Christian. It's just sharing a common interest. But for us to say, who in my life has not said yes to Jesus? And boy, if they did, it would radically change their life. Now, here's something, if I can be really honest and share the pure, transparent heart of a pastor. Not only meant for our church and Christians here, but even Christians in general. I'm going to say something that's pretty tough, okay? So get ready. Is it can bother me because I'm not sure how many Christians really care about other people becoming Christians. Can I, can I, can I be honest? Because I, because I think sometimes we can hear a message like today. We, we, can, we can see what Jesus did. We can hear his heart. That we're supposed to have a heart like his. Jesus. Heavenly Father is broken for people, and, and, and we just don't have that. And, and we can hear a message like today and walk out and not do anything with it. And sometimes it, it can grieve my heart to say, I don't know if, I just wonder how much we care. And see, when we lack compassion, what happens is, and, and we don't have this strong desire to alleviate the suffering, we just kind of walk past it. And no one says that I wanted to do that or I meant to do that. We just have an embrace compassion to say, I need to do something about it. And so today what I want to do is just looking at a few things here in this little encounter that Jesus has with a leper. I want us to be able to look at some ways that if it was music to Jesus's ears, hearing the bells, hearing the hurting, then man, how do we need to listen up so that we can have the same compassion that we reflect the heart of a living God who was there to rescue and save other people just like he did ourselves. Someone say amen. Amen. And so here's a couple of things. You can put this in your notes today. One thing is if it's going to be music to our ears is that we have to listen for misery. We have to listen for misery. How many of you know some miserable people? I mean, we do. And that's not in like a funny way. It's a serious way. Here is Dr. Luke. And not only in this version here, he says this guy is filled with leprosy, but in another version, it says he is covered. Like the doctor is saying, he is covered. This is an extreme case of leprosy. And there's a sickness. And in the scripture that we read here about he's come for the sick, it's not talking about physically. Actually, the Greek word that that comes from is miserable or badly. That he's come for those who were in misery. That even when it says sinners, 
It's not talking about just that there's going and committing sin. What it is, is it's an archery term that means missing the mark. They're missing the target. That we have people that we know in our lives and, and we're surrounded by. Either they're miserable or they just feel like, I thought life was better than this. That I'm, I thought it would be better than this. They're missing the target and they don't see it. And so they're, they're living a life that is somewhat destructive. They're living a life that is aimless and they're hurting. And I think it's somewhat maybe like this, like this uh, man who has leprosy that would be, I'm falling apart. My life is falling apart and I don't know how to get out. I don't know how, how to have a new life and I want a better life. And church, are we going to lack compassion? Or are we going to be filled with compassion like Jesus? And instead of having a man who was filled with leprosy on his own, it was Jesus being filled with compassion that eradicated the leprosy. And we have an opportunity to remove the, the, the target that's missing, the bad life, the miserable life, if we share the love and the compassion of God. Another thing that we see here is that uh, we need to listen for isolation. We need to listen for isolation because people are going through life and they don't know how to get through life and they're alone and they wish somebody maybe even cared. You know, I, uh, things about uh, lepers back in this time, there were so many things that happened that were like harsh treatment. And they were so ostracized. They were, they were banished from, uh, from family. They were banished from social activities, from spiritual activities. Uh, because of their illness, they were actually not allowed to live in the city. They had to go outside the city and live with other people who have skin diseases and more. They couldn't even be in here near other people. As a matter of fact, they, they couldn't come within six feet of other individuals. If they did, people were allowed to throw rocks and dirt at them to get them away. Now, beyond that, on a windy day, they weren't allowed to be within 150 feet of anybody at all because maybe the wind might blow the sickness and get someone else sick and they would have the disease. They couldn't be within a half a football field of other people. We're talking about people who, who had never experienced a loving personal touch from somebody else. We're talking about people who actually, it, it was said that they couldn't even comb their hair. They had to have their hair unkept so people could recognize that's one of them. And so you had these people that would walk around and they'd be ringing the bell and also they would be yelling, I'm unclean, I'm dirty. I'm unclean, stay away from me. And how many times in our life do we have people that are, that are rejected, feeling rejected? They're alone. Or they're lonely. They're breaking up and messing up relationships because that's all they know. And, and many times they may feel like no one even cares. No one is even here to help me. And that's where we have an opportunity to show compassion, not say, man, you're really messing up in life. Or to just avoid them because it's so easy to do. Because so many times people have drama. We don't want to get in drama. But you know what? We can't allow drama to hurt us. It's got to be music to our ears that we respond to do something. Now, can you imagine, I think about even family. I think about my kids. I think about my wife, that what if they had this disease and I wasn't even allowed to even go near them, that they would never experience a touch from me or a hug or a kiss. They were totally banished away. What kind of people do we have in our lives that are hurting today, that are isolated and alone, and they just wish that someone would care? They hear about a Christian that is in their environment or in their circle, and they just wish that they would share the hope of Jesus with them. There's a, book, um, a movie that I seen back in the 90s, and it was with, was with Al Pacino, and he was a blind man, and he was a colonel in, in the military, and at one point, he gets to a place he's so miserable because he's blind that he wants to commit suicide. And there's a young man trying to talk him out of it. And as he's trying to talk him out of it, you know, Al Pacino keeps bringing up an argument and they're going back and forth. And finally, he just somehow pushes a button, this kid does. And Al Pacino says this, I'm all alone in here. I'm all alone in here. Everything's dark. 
And he's saying, I don't know how to get out and nobody can relate to me. Nobody can help me. And I think we have, we probably have people in our lives that may act a certain way and may do a certain thing, but they're all alone in there. And will we as believers, as followers of Christ, let that be music to our ears and say, I'm coming to the rescue. I'm going to do something about it. I want to see them say yes to Jesus. And I want to see Jesus change their life that we would have the compassion, that we would want to alleviate the suffering. And then the last one is this, is that we would just simply listen for desperation. These people, they would be treated as if they were dead. They were left for dead. And what would happen with their bodies is because of the, the, the it was, you know, uh, deformed and it was falling apart, their nerve endings would actually begin to die off. And so when they would be, uh, you know, walking somewhere or going somewhere, they could bang their, their body parts against something and part of their, part of their uh, flesh, it would fall off or it would just begin to, you know, flake off and they couldn't feel it. And see what happens is with people, they just live expecting it's just a dead end and I wish there could be a change. I don't see this getting any better. I don't know how to get out. And so uh, it, you know, you think of the scripture in Proverbs where it says, where there is no vision, people cast off restraint. There's a point to where I don't ever see my life changing. I don't ever see my life getting better. And so they just live wild and live destructive and do whatever they can to hopefully I feel better and things change for me. And we question why people live a certain way and why they're being destructive and why they're trying to self-medicate. And that's why the divorces are happening. That's why the, the abortions are happening. That's why the addictions are happening. That's why there's sexual frustration. That's why there's messed up relationships and dramas and fighting and all of these things because they can't see a way out. And this leper is standing here and sees Jesus and he falls on the floor flat and he's begging Jesus, if you want to do it, you can. If you want to do it, you can heal me. And here's something that it's not said in the Bible, but we know it's, it, this is fact. It says that Jesus reached out and touched him. But remember, this man couldn't come close to him, at least six feet. Maybe it was even further that Jesus didn't just reach out and touch him. Jesus went and he crossed the lines. He crossed the lines of everybody saying, you don't do that. We avoid them. We don't go near them. We could get messed up. Jesus crossed the lines. He reached out and he touched him. And immediately he was healed and he was changed. And Jesus wants to do that in the lives of people. But will you and I say, I'm willing to go there. Because we have a man who's saying this, Jesus, would you clean me up? Would you clean up the mess in my life? Would you clean up the hurt and the pain? Would you clean me? I just want to be clean and I want to be right. And we have the opportunity and we can't lack compassion. But we have to have this compassion to say, I'm going to walk across the line. I'm going to do something. This is going to be music to my ears, not a distraction or a deterrent. So the question for you, today is are you going to be willing do you want to do i want to be willing to say look i'm going to step out and i'm going to reach somebody else i'd like for you to just close your eyes for a minute and for a minute i just want you to think of the faces or some people that haven't said yes to jesus i think it's easy for us to neglect our workplace and people that we work with and now ah, maybe they don't want to know or ah, maybe they have another religion. It's all wrong because we know Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life and there isn't any other way. And so we share Jesus. But who in your life, the faces that you would say they need Jesus? Are they important enough? Do we have compassion enough to say, I've got to get out of my comfort zone? And I've got to reach out and I need to bring them. I need for them to see Jesus. Are you willing to even do that this week, being, be that intentional? Would you be willing to address it enough? Check this out. Knowing what they're going through, the misery of their separation from God, or they're, they're isolated or they're desperate. You just see all of these signs happening. Would you be willing to just reach out to them? 
in a simple way, even say, hey, look, I know you've been going through a lot or there's just been some junk that you're working through. But you could really use a laugh. And I'd like for you to come to church with me next week. You could really use an escape and just have some joy. And I think that you would really be encouraged. It's not about entertainment. We know we're bringing them here because we want them to know the message and the love of Jesus. Are we willing to do that? And here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want us to do. Would you just begin right now? Would you, in your own way, would you just begin to pray for them? Would you pray for them that their heart would be open and that they would actually be glad? Would you pray for yourself that you would have courage and that you would say, Lord, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And Lord, I'm going to reflect the heart of Jesus and I'm going to have compassion for those who are forgotten. Just take a minute. Just have a personal prayer for them today. Jesus at one point he was empowering and giving a charge to his disciples to go out and do ministry and to begin to initiate healing. See here's, here's the deal I want you to see this the healing of Jesus and lives of people begins with you and I we take that step and Jesus moves we have the power to bring healing for other people that they would find hope and they would find wholeness in Jesus and this is the instruction that Jesus gave his disciples. Check this out. It says this. He says, heal the sick in that town. Wherever you're going in that town, what's your town? Let's go after them and let's see them heal the sick. And he said, heal the sick in that town and say to the people there, the kingdom of God has come near to you. And I shared last week how, man, this next season, it's about the kingdom, heart and soul. And what a powerful thing when we see ourselves as healing age, agents for God that we reach out and lives can be changed and be able to say, by the way, I want you to know the kingdom of God is near you right now and he wants to change your life and he wants to do something miraculous in you. He's saying, look, I want you to tell them this is the kingdom. You get to be a part of the kingdom. I've told you it's about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom that we stretch the walls of heaven and we see people come to Jesus and have life and purpose and hope and eternity through him. We bring that. That's what next week is about, Comedy Sunday. It's about Jesus and people saying yes to Jesus. That's our goal. So will you? Do you want to? I was texting with Dennis this past week and we were going back and forth just making sure we we're on the same page for next Sunday and I told him you know we we're going to Baja we have a mission trip I'll be back on Saturday for Sunday and he and he and he texts this to me he said have a safe trip in Baja and when you get back we're gonna win souls for the kingdom because Dennis understands it's about the kingdom the kingdom the kingdom it's about winning souls to Jesus. God's given him a gift. God's given him ability, but it is not for him. It is for people to bring, to come to Jesus, say yes to Jesus. It's about the kingdom. And he is coming here with one mission in mind is to see that happen. And my goal would be for you and for me that we would come to church next week with people. We would come here with a mentality of it's all about somebody saying yes to the kingdom of God in their lives.